the Vancouver2010.com podcast, your window into the Vancouver 2010 Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games. In Canada, hockey is the sport most associated with national pride, and that's why we're so excited to host it during the 2010 Winter Games. Well, the fans and the players tell you why, too. It's fast-paced, it's fun, it's competitive. It's a, a national identity. It's recreation, and I guess it's a bit of culture, and just something that brings the family together. It's in their blood. They have no choice, you know. It's violent. <laughs> oh, it's just a good family event. Everybody getting out, watching some hockey, and, you know, it's Canada. It's hockey. Why do Canadians love hockey so much? Well, in the wintertime, there's not much else to do uh, other than shovel your driveway and uh, stay in and eat popcorn. What's the best way to watch hockey? Is it with your feet up on the Chesterfield, or uh, is it with a beer at, at the game itself? On the Ottoman. Actually, there's no substitute for being at the game. Just being athletic in general helps on the ice, being good at all sports, but quick feet, uh, good hands, good to go. What skills do you need as a defenseman? Uh, you have to be able to kind of read the game so you can eliminate the offense and then you have to be able to see your own players so you can move the puck quickly. What skills do you need as a center? You need to be kind of all-around player, you need, you need to be able to be good defense and forward too. What kind of skills does a forward need to be successful? Well you need a uh, good vision, skating, shooting. What skills do you need as a goalie? Uh, you have to be fast and you have to focus all the time. You have to be mentally strong. As a goaltender, do you have any ritual with the post? Do you give him a tap for good luck or anything like that? Un unfortunately, I do, yeah. Before every game, I have a little thing, but I try not to get too superstitious. What's your thing? Uh, you're going to have to watch it. It's hard to explain. But both posts, little pads, good to go. A, a captain obviously has a huge responsibility. You, you know, you got to be uh, getting your teammates ready to go, focus. You know, just your support system, your, your communication lines between the coaching staff and the, and the players. And, you know, your job is to make uh, your teammates' job easier. Every time we get together, it's like it's like a big family. We just built a lot of chemistry off ice. We have a great time together, and it shows on ice. How are you guys communicating out there between you know from all the way from goalie to forwards? I think it's been pretty good. The crowd isn't big enough that you can't hear each other right now, but it could be a factor later on. So it's important to constantly talk to each other and sort of prepare for what that uh, could feel like in a big game where you couldn't hear anything. How does um, this NHL size ice change the game? Uh, it creates a totally different game actually, uh, playing on the big ice, uh, there's a lot more space out there. Uh, on an NHL size ice it's going to be a lot more physical, um, you're going to have to make plays that much quicker. and um, So it's, it's fun, it makes the game uh, a little quicker I think at times. The game is faster for sure and I think it's make the difference between good and a little bit worse team, like more even. Did you say the women's game is much different from the men's? It's a lot more, I'd say skill. Skill oriented. We don't have any body checking. Uh, we do a body contact, so I think people would be surprised to see how much contact there actually is in a non body checking game. Tell us about the respect logo you have on the back of your jerseys. What does that mean? Uh, just to respect your opponent. Um, always be aware of where they are when they're close to the boards, um, just so you don't hit anybody from behind and end a career when you don't have to. There's the physical aspect of the game, but what's what's the mental game for you? I always sort of say a free mind and an unburdened heart. So I think it's that's when I sort of perform my best. But it's finding a balance between that, right? Being sort of have a free mind, but also being intense enough for the competition. Why hockey? What made you choose hockey? Uh, we've grown up, we have four older brothers that uh, played hockey before us. I was like three years old, my brother was playing, I wanted to be like my brother. Um, I grew up in a hockey town, War of Minnesota is uh, pretty much everyone there plays hockey. I grew up at the rink, you know, chasing uh, the puck around or, or playing kick the can in the stands when my brother was playing. Hockey was always my passion and it was something uh, I was excited to do when I woke up every morning. What's making the sport grow for women? They're showing more games in TV, um, media is showing more women's hockey and uh, of course when uh, when the national team is playing well it's it's getting more 
in the news and uh, more girls are coming to the game. What can you learn from your teammates who have been to the Olympic Games before? What do they tell you of the experience? The whole world is looking when you're playing and uh, it will be like the biggest thing you've ever done. Random question, men grow playoff beards, what do women do? Everyone's a little different, I mean some, some girls have done the shaving legs thing where they don't shave their legs that often but I don't think there's anything that's quite that has quite the, the status that sort of the playoff beards do so I don't think we're in that territory just yet. Do you have any pre-game rituals? We have Cirque du Soleil juggling balls and uh, we have quite a routine going, maybe you guys will catch us one day. To learn more about this sport or for other podcasts, go to Vancouver2010.com.